It's your girl Miracle Sims, and you're watching the GSL Talk Show. Tonight, we're going to be chatting with Miss Ramona Gailey, so stay tuned. Welcome back to the GSL Talk Show. I'm here with Miss Verona Gailey. How you doing? I'm doing great, Miracle. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I can't complain, good. you know. <laughs> good, good, good. Well, I am so happy to be here with you. I can't wait for our little chat. It's going to be great. Yes, yes. I'm excited as well. Yes, welcome to the GSL Talk Show. I know it's your first time with us. And so, yep. yeah, we got to get to know you. <laughs> Excellent. Awesome. So tell us um, where you're from and then a little bit about yourself. Okay. Well, I am living currently in the mountains of Georgia. I'm originally from Maryland, but I love the mountains. I love the views. I love the weather and I love the altitude, the wildlife. The people are so friendly and so supportive, encouraging. And I feel like I'm living on vacation every day, every day of my life. I'm living here. So I'm very oh. happy to be here. Yeah. Now listen, we're probably gonna find out we neighbors after this. Let me we'll we'll compare locations and <laughs> how we get it. Okay. Yeah, sounds um, good. No, I'm not hiding it per se, but yeah, I'm in Georgia as well. So very cool. Very I like cool. to say to people when I'm talking to people in Georgia, I'm like, ah, uh, see, this is just a reminder that I need to get me a studio <laughs> <laughs> in person. But until the end, you know, this has been great. I've been able to. Yeah, talk. yeah. This, I mean, this came on board with Zoom. I mean, with uh, um, COVID and all that stuff. And so now everybody knows what a Zoom call is. Before that, I mean, I was using Zoom before COVID, but hardly anybody <laughs> even knew what it was. So yeah, it's been a big change, hasn't it? Oh yeah. And then I, you know, the awesome thing of being able to again create the content and whatnot in regards to having the conversations and making a podcast and all those different types of things. You know, who knows? I guess I should have did this years ago, you know, because I feel like it's a bit of a calling. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Awesome. Well, then tell me, tell me what you got going on, Miss Ramona. Like, what, what are you into? What's, what's up with you? <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you, I had no spiritual or religious beliefs until about 10 years ago, like none. Mm. And I had tried, I had been to a lot of churches, synagogues, uh, friends meetings, like I had been trying to find my spiritual awakening. And because two of my sister, two of my siblings are born again Christians, and I wanted what they had only I couldn't, I just couldn't do it. I just couldn't mm. figure it out. It wouldn't wasn't a good match or something. And, and I was mm. looking and looking and looking. And then my partner passed away. And all of a sudden, I was, um, well, I was getting ready to take my own life, frankly, and mm. I was very um, verklempt, as the as the Germans would say, and I was, you know, just crying and, and walking around the the my place, you know, just trying, you know, trying to write my note and figure out what, you know, like, I was, it was bad, and so mm. uh, my partner's best friend called and said, oh, you know, I just heard, you know, and, and I was crying, and um, her name's Lordella, and I said, you know, I, I don't remember what I said, but she said, you got to stop thinking like that right now. And I said, well, I agree, but I feel like I've been trying to learn how to control my thoughts, you know, my whole life, try to find some bigger meaning. And I just, I just haven't succeeded. And so she introduced me to the subject of Abraham Hicks. And so I started studying that and, and I took to it like a duck to water. It just made so much sense. And so I found my spiritual awakening at age 55 starting over just completely brand new brand new in the world brand new in my in my life in my body in my in my everything and it's just been 
just a phenomenal, just God blessed uh, journey ever since. And so I learned it. I studied it. I studied it 24 day, you know, 24 seven, as they say, and I started teaching it. And then mm. I started uh, receiving my guides on behalf of others. That has another whole long story to it. But um, just suffice it to say that now I help people who are coming probably from a pretty, pretty um, similar spiritual paradigm from where I was. People that don't have a strong faith in their life. They don't have that support. They don't have uh, whatever you want to call that. Like, you know, all that spiritual and, and human support that comes from being a part of something bigger than us and recognizing the power and the, the glory and the, the divinity of the world around us and to appreciate that and to share it with others. So that's kind of the, the short version, but here I am. It's been almost 10 years since then. It's been almost five years since I started receiving my guides for others. And um, it's been, it's been just a, just a blessed journey. So. Wow. Well, um, well, first, thank you so much for um, your transparency and, and sharing, you know, those vulnerable moments in your life and things like that. I mean, honestly, I was just um, talking on my daily inspiration segment of the show, and I was pretty much sharing about like a, a young elementary um, girl that was kind of letting me know, because I'm an elementary coordinator at the church that I go to, and um, during the prayer, she kind of was expressing some things that I'm like, maybe we should talk, you know, maybe we should just go sit to the side and talk. And at some point, she pretty much just revealed to me that um, she's ha been having ideation about harming herself. And so, I mean, it can, it's so real in kids and adults, you know, I mean, it's it, it's real thing, it's real issue. So, um, yeah. yeah, so thank you for, for being vulnerable and sharing that. Uh, for those that don't understand what Abraham Hicks is, can you explain that to us? Sure. It, Esther Hicks is a woman. She's a little, right? Uh, well, Esther Hicks. Yeah, Esther Hicks is the name of the woman. She receives Abraham, so they call it Abraham Hicks. It's kind of a compound name. So it sounds okay. like a guy, but it's really Esther Hicks. And so she receives her guides and they call themselves Abraham. They refer to themselves in the plural, even though it sounds singular. So it's kind of confusing. So you oh, go to Abraham yeah. Hicks without knowing anything, you're going to expect to see a guy. And then there's a woman there and then she's receiving infinite intelligence. So um, uh, but they, they became my teachers and then I walked in her footsteps when I started doing the same thing. And really the main difference is that besides she's been doing it for 40 years and I've been doing it for five years, but also she does these huge groups of people anywhere from 800 to thousands of people at once. And people raise their hands and try to get up, up on stage and ask questions. Whereas I see people privately and in very small groups. So everybody gets a chance to ask multiple questions. And so, but that's, that's the main difference. Other than that, it's very similar to what, uh, to what they're doing. And if you just go on YouTube for anybody, any of your audience that wants to know more about Abraham Hicks, go on YouTube, put in Abraham Hicks and any subject you want to know about death, grief, drugs, just any, any topic and some clips will come up and you can get a good idea of what she's teaching and what their be whole belief system is by doing that. And I highly recommend it. Very, very soothing, very healing information. Like how to how to be more in control, how to be in total control, really, of your own life and what's happening for you, working with the divinity that's all around us, that is part of us. It's like how to get back in touch with who we truly are. Um, and, it, and I think it's especially helpful for people who don't have any other like religious or spiritual support or community or paradigm that they believe in. Mm. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, well, I guess the, <laughs> I guess I'm, I'm a fish out of water, as they say right now. So I'm, I'm kind of like it's all new, right? What you're saying to me. Um. So and I don't have time to go look and see. What we're, well, you know, while we're talking. So um. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I'm just gonna be asking all the questions. You know. Uh, <laughs> okay. So um. Okay, so I know you were saying that, you know, um, the group situation and things of that nature. So um, if we can go back to like your childhood and things of that nature, like you're saying your sisters, they, I guess, grew into the faith of in regards to Christ and um, things of that nature. And then it wasn't something that necessarily resonated with you. Did everybody kind of grow up um, under? Now, I know as the older daughter, no, no shade to my family, but I know sometimes we can be on the same household and it seems like 
everybody is raised completely differently. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I, you know, I do understand that part. So I'm not asking like, was everybody raised the same in that regard? But like, I mean, I'm, I'm curious to know like what, what was the upbringing and, and the teachings um, in your younger ye- years um, to, and then to the point where you got to where you're like, okay, I see that my two sisters have gone this way and I don't know how to go that way or I don't agree or whatever the case may be like, Right. If you feel you know, comfortable sharing your part. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm happy to share. So we I have I have four siblings, or five of us total. And oh. I had uh two sisters and two brothers. And I say had because one of my sisters has passed on now. But uh mm-hmm. it was one sister and one brother, but it wasn't while we were growing up, it was after we were adults that they both found mm-hmm. Christ. And oh, um, so we were raised very loosely Methodist, I would say, like very mm-hmm. not um not like we went to church, but it wasn't something we ever talked about outside of church. The kids all went mm-hmm. to like Sunday school. My parents went to the actual services. So mm-hmm. to tell you the truth, I still to this day don't really know what Methodists <laughs> believe in or stand for because it was just not a strong, you know, and then the family unit started to fall apart fairly early. Mm-hmm. And so we even stopped that little bit of going to church. And so this mm-hmm. was all something that they both did. Both my oldest sister sort of led the way and then my youngest brother kind of joined her you know and they have just been rock solid sources of spiritual comfort for me really ever since even though i wasn't right there with them Mm -hmm. because they loved me and i loved them you know we were able to have long talks about about how the world works or you know what things in the you know passages in the bible what they meant and and then when i started receiving When I started following Esther Hicks or Abraham Hicks, I learned a whole new set of vocabulary. And my sister, my oldest sister, was the one that I talked to an awful lot about it. And she was concerned at first when I first started doing it. She was concerned that uh, about what it actually meant, you know, in terms of, you know, what I'm, you know, like, like, what does it mean from God's point of view? Right. And so we had long talks about. So I would say, you know, this is the terminology I'm learning and this is the subject, this is the, 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 uh, the meaning of it. And then she would say, oh, well in the Bible, that sounds like this, or, you know, so we would kind of find common ground in all of our discussions over a couple of years. She was very, very helpful, very supportive. And, um, so anyway, that's kind of the, the, the short version of the story that we were not raised with any spiritual or religious paradigm at all. And then I had two siblings out of four uh, come to it late in life and just beautifully and just really I, I could see the the benefit and the love and the positivity that it brought into their lives. That's why I started really looking, because I could see that it helped them so much. But mm-hmm. their paradigm just really didn't quite fit with mine. Uh, but we we kind of got there in the end. You know, we kind of both circled around from two different directions and met in the middle. So hmm. yeah, very blessed. Okay. I mean, I, I think it's definitely, um, you know, a good thing for people to be able to, even if you believe differently or whatever the case may be, to be able to have conversations, at least. Absolutely. You know, um, and and then, again, agree to disagree. Now, I know we live in this world that, you know, <laughs> it's like people are mad that you don't agree. <laughs> uh, and it's like, but I, I, for me, I, the more I think about it, I'm like, and I, I feel like I talk to the Lord about this all the time. I'm like, Lord, you gave us all free will. Like, what do you want me to do? Like, I mean, like, you know, I know I'm supposed to share the gospel, this, that, and the other, but I'm like, you know, people going to do what they want to do. And I mean, but at the same time, I just know there's a bigger plan and picture at that. So I get it, but at the same time, it's just like, Lord, you gave us this free will that we just, I mean, I don't know, because then it's operating and like, and I know you want me to do something along your your will, but at the same time, your people though, your people, I can't do nothing about these people, what they want to do. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> so, so I guess that's why, again, even with GSL and everything like that, I mean, I welcome anybody to come and, you know, come talk or whatever. I've had people that are unbelievers or people come talk, but um one thing I tend to notice about some groups versus others is that, again, there's this strong, like, it's like, I'm not trying to force you to believe what I believe, you know, um, right. I believe that um, God convicts people and things of that nature. I believe the Bible itself does that. Like, um, mm-hmm. it's not that I have to do, even if I sit here and say it in the calmest, nicest way that 
hey, the Bible says such and such. People can get offended by that, you know? And it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> but it's not me that you're mad at. You're mad that it says what it says. Because I didn't write it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't right. create it, you know? And things right. of that nature. And so um, so I can understand, like, for example, you were mentioning the concern that your um, sister I was showing about, like, uh, you know, trying to figure out, like, what it is um, that you are doing and, and things of that nature. Because, I mean, you know, I would say that if anybody that really actually reads the Bible and study and things of that nature, you're going to see that it, it seems to be very clear that there's only two options, even though I know in the world, people believe there's, there's a, a, a lot of options. But according to it, it seems like it's very like, it's either this or this, you know, hmm. um, so people can be very concerned about that, especially when they love you or your family, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, sure. you know, you don't want to know like, oh, you know, because again, they say that the two options are heaven or hell. And it's like, you don't want to think or know or feel like, oh, my family, my friend, my loved one, my dog, like they're not going to be, you know, people. Um, and so people are concerned. But then on the flip side, uh, people don't see that as love. You know, people don't see that as concern. People see that as you're trying to tell me what to do or they're trying to say, you know, all the alternative things that people say and feel. And so, um, but anyway, I guess I was saying is that I do understand or can resonate with what you said that your sister felt. Um, but I love that you said that you guys were able to come together and like talk about it, you know, because some people don't aren't, you know, they don't talk about it or next thing you know, you can't come to the family reunion, like you're disowned or or something, you know, or whatever. Um, people feel that way. And then or the flip side where it's like, or if you don't agree or whatever, then you can't be around me or something. It's like, you know, what can we do to like just show love regardless. Um, exactly. I feel like that's what, it, you know, I believe in Christ. So I, I feel like that's what he does to us. So it's like, why can't I just give that to you? Like at the end of the day, I understand. If you don't believe what I believe, that's fine. Guess what? You got free will. You got free will to not believe. Now, Absolutely. you can't get mad at me if I'm telling you what to say, if you ask, because that's another thing too, but girl, that's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> that's uh, another whole conversation. That's exactly that, that's, right. Yeah. <laughs> But anywho, so I'm sure that you probably had a lot of um, conversations like this, or or am I assuming? Don't let me assume. Yeah, have no, you had no, a lot of these many, many long late night conversations, mm -hmm. uh, very gentle and loving conversations. Never any of that conflict like you're describing. My my family is very close knit. Our, our parents are gone now, but five mm -hmm. siblings. My my sister was killed by her husband. And uh, that would only happen like in the in the fall of 2020. So like once COVID was really like full up and running and they were both drinking a lot and he shot and killed her and he's in prison now. And so so that whole like, you know, you you know, like it's the it's it's such a blessing. I, I, I know that sounds strange to say it, but it is such a blessing when something happens and whoever's left, you know, whatever it is that happened, like whatever's left can come together in love and mutual support and mm. to be there for each other and to to mm. help each other, you know, understand and, and cope and, and you know, thrive mm. eventually. And it's it's just so beautiful. It's like I can't I can't really even uh, remember what it was like to not believe in. I, I mean, I call God source, you know, when I'm talking to my clients mm. and I think of God as source or infinite intelligence. But to me, it's all the same thing. And it and mm. it's from my perspective, it doesn't it, it. There's not a big difference between, you know, your God and my God. I don't mean you particularly, but like anybody else's God and my God, even the one who says, well, it's just Mother Nature or, you know, like there's just so many different ways of, of looking at it. But it's so beautiful and so perfect that it's it's hard for me to even remember what it felt like to not believe in that. And it wasn't that I was like an atheist or, or anything. It's just that I could sense that there was something there, but I couldn't get a handle on what it was or who it was or how it worked. And it was confusing to me. And so mm. the, the clarity just feels fantastic. And the tuning into all that is that beautiful sense of that, that pure love that exists all around us and within us, if we, if we will let it, you know, that's everything to me. And mm -hmm. so I'm just, I just feel very blessed for having come out the other end of that and to be able to now turn around and help people who, um, who also don't have a, a really strong faith. Some of them, I mean, some of them do have a strong faith coming in, but, but a lot of them, they don't. And, and it's a way to really get um, love. 
That's what mm -hmm. we all want is love, you know, and God gives us completely unconditional, permanent 24 seven love. And so you get mm -hmm. tuned into that and everything changes. I, I mean, I am in agreement. I mean, I know there's questions about like, well, what do you mean when you mean say God? Because then some people mean something else and, you know, stuff like sure. that. Um, I do want, uh, well, it did cross my mind to probably ask you about um, in reference to um, more questions about like how you felt or what you didn't resonate when it came to Christianity or um, maybe Jesus in particular or something like that. But we can talk about that in a second because I feel like, well, one, I don't want to go without acknowledging, you know, what you shared about your sister in that horrific mm -hmm. um, situation and whatnot. And, um, you know, I'm sorry that your family went through that as well. And, Thank you. you know, you just, oh, God, like, you know what I mean? You just never know. Like, I know people say all the time, like, you know, who you marry, who you, you know, sometimes again, sometimes a child or, you know, so you never think like the person I married or the or the child I gave birth to or the, you know, so that type of thing is just. Yeah. Um, that, that's so sad to to hear that that, that happened. And um thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, to hear thank that, you but, very much. Ah. Uh, yeah, I lost two members of my family because her husband was a beloved member of our family. My brother in law yeah, knew we were so close. And they'd been married for, you know, what, 30 or 40 years or whatever. And so um just a really integral part of the of the of the family. And to lose mm. them both, you know, mm. one permanently and, and suddenly like that. And the other one just kind of in this weird kind of, I don't know, I don't even know how to describe it. You know, this weird thing of figuring out what happened and then watching, yeah. you know, the, the legal process go through and speaking at his sentencing and just all the different yeah. parts of that, that uh, it, it's a lot tougher to go through stuff like that if you don't have spiritual support. Like yeah. it's just so much, it's like night and day, as I'm sure you yeah. know, <laughs> it's just spiritual support uh, is everything. You know, and I, I'm, I'm glad you said that too, because again, um, I, I was um, telling the young lady that I was just telling you about um, how much it affects when you do something to yourself. But then you just mentioned again, something even bigger that, yeah, you lost two family members at the same time, because yeah. again, yeah, the bond that you guys had as, as, you know, brother-in-law and sister-in-law and things of that nature, um, yeah, I mean, you know, again, people don't think about these things and I have no clue like what happened and why and the reasoning and what the, you know, courts and all that, you know, obviously it's none of my business, I guess. But my thing is just like, um, yeah, I just hope and pray that anybody listening to the sign of our voice or watching this or whatever the case may be like, you know, there's all kinds of ideation and things out there that tries to get you to go a certain way and do certain things. Um, and then sometimes you think like, oh, it, there's no you know, point or, you know, if I hurt myself, it's not going to matter. Or if I, you know, right. or maybe this person, you know, we think that type of stuff, but then we forget, yeah. you know, yeah. and when we're disconnected, that's how we think. That's it. And and honestly, um, even what you just said about um, having um, now, I again, again, I'm going to say relationship with, you know, Christ, but, um, you know, uh, I can't say something. I, I think having that and then not having that you can see completely again you know where people go in the route that we go because i'm not i mean i, I don't know i don't know what your you know brother-in-law for example believe in the things like that but i i just believe that people that are i guess you would say believers or whatever the case may be it's like you know you usually don't necessarily it usually is something like either the mind or to, or maybe it's like uh, a residual from like trying to protect yourself where you done took somebody's life, things like that. But, you know, you don't just that's just not a normal thing, you know. Um, well, he was really struggling with alcohol and he's got some mm -hmm. some Native American blood in him. And mm -hmm. I really think that that affected him to the point where he couldn't he couldn't control himself anymore. And that had been going mm -hmm. on for several years. It was a really bad situation. And we had tried to support her as much as possible. And but she she wouldn't even consider some of the things that probably, you know, could have been done. And mm. so it's just, you know, I, I don't sit in judgment over either one of them or over their situation because yeah. you know I, I, I can't, you know, I don't even sit over in judgment over me and I can control me and I can't, you know, I don't know anything about anybody else. So I yeah. I just work at it every day to not sit in judgment. And uh, he has since become, well, he was actually, he was raised as a believer and I think he was in the military for 30 years. And I 
think that that kind of wore away at at his faith. And then the mm. alcohol kind of finished it off. But he is in prison right now, and he has mm-hmm. become a very strong believer again. Oh, wow. And then, um, he's teaching others and mm. especially reaching out to the military community about the drinking, um, mm. you know, paradigm that they that they push a lot into very heavily into drinking a lot and Mm -hmm. so he he is providing some feedback that maybe a young man or young woman in the military maybe wouldn't get otherwise and hopefully helping other people to to make different choices yes well that's a blessing i'm glad to hear that because um yeah Mm -hmm. with the military and stuff not only the alcoholism and whatnot but then the ptsd you know all of that different type of stuff where people are dealing with um, you know, it's so interesting because I just had a conversation with someone that was in the military, but um, yeah, it's like on one hand, you know, some and sometimes these people are young when they go in, you know, so it's like you barely know yourself going into it, and yeah, right. you might be going in, you know, to, for certain reason, you're like, oh, I might just want to go to college or I just, you know, but then yep. you find yourself in these situations, and I can't even imagine because I'm, you know, I didn't didn't do it, but uh, mm-hmm. I know my husband in the Marine Corps, so. And, you know, I just know some of the things that he deals with. And so it's just, yeah, you know, well, thank thank him for his service, right? Thank, the, you know, the other people that yeah. are, you know, serving in that regard, because that that is a, um, I guess, heavy cross the bear, right? You, you're putting your life on exactly. the line. And then well, yeah, he had with. that. He definitely had that PTSD, but he mm-hmm. wasn't allowed to talk to anybody about it because it was all top secret. He had been on a lot of top secret missions and mm-hmm. not allowed to talk about it. Mm. And not even therapy though they're well they're not allowed to be in therapy i mean you ruin your career if you go into therapy at least that's the way it used to be i i hope that oh. it's starting to change now but when he was active military if you went and saw a therapist and they found out about it that was the end of your career and so oh, the damage no. was done fairly early on and then mm. it was like the drinking was the symptom of the damage and mm. then it just got out of control and she was drinking a lot too. And, and that changed mm. her, it changed both of them, you know, away from the, the loving, intelligent, articulate people that they always were just incredibly honorable people mm. into something that you, you wouldn't even recognize if wow. you'd known them earlier. So, yeah, man, that's so real. Like sometimes we got to get to the root, right? The root of whatever the issue is versus like, Again, because again, we we like to focus on the symptoms and like, oh, the, you know, the death or the, you know, the alcohol and, and things like that. But like, what caused that? You know what right. I mean? Like, right. we need to take more time to figure that part out and and help right. you. Or you or know? even just how can I how can I process this and release it better? Because mm. you know, stuff happens. We're here on the physical plane. I mean, life happens. You know, and we don't have any control over most of it. And Mm -hmm. so when something happens, if you don't have the skill, and this is why I do what I do, because I I love teaching, because I learned the skills very late in life, and it took Mm -hmm. me a long time, and I can see that that other people could have such a much better life if they could learn these skills. And I can Mm -hmm. teach them much faster than I learned them myself, because I didn't have an individual teacher. I had Esther Hicks, as I was saying, but, uh, you know, I've never even had a full convert. I mean, I've said hi to her a couple times in the hall or something when I've seen, like I've done workshops and stuff, but I didn't have anybody to really, you know, teach me to mentor me like one-on-one. And that's mm. what I think. That's, that's what I think most of the religions, I, I think, I hope that that would be mo- one of the main purposes of, of Christianity, for example, is to teach mm. people how to be happy, how to be in, in, uh, line with God, or however you might say that, I say in alignment, um, to 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 have the skills to recover your alignment, no matter what happens, no matter mm. what happens. And people mm. hear that and they go, oh, no, that's not possible. If I was in prison, you know, I'd be mad. I'd be, you know, I'd, you know, whatever. And you don't have to. It doesn't matter if somebody's beating on you. It doesn't matter if you've got a drug addiction. It doesn't matter if you've just had an abortion or just given birth, you know, to a child as a source of rape or like it doesn't like there's all this stuff that can happen. And mm-hmm. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. I'm saying if mm-hmm. you have the skills to deal with it, it doesn't have to mm-hmm. take you out. As as a as a sole entity, right? You can stay. You can stay. That's so true. I mean, again, and I believe that's what Christ offers. He, you know, you can have joy, love, hope, peace, all the fruits of the spirit when you yes, get in alignment. But then, but see, that's the thing. We got to humble ourselves, right? And we think we can do it on our own. 
And I think that's probably, you know, half the battle there is feeling like, you know, because a lot of people go through, they're like, oh, I don't need no Jesus or I don't need that. I am God, whatever, you know, people say all kinds of things. And, but I guess, and I'm, I mean, I'm not trying to act like I'm the guru or nothing, but I'm just trying to, I just share my testimony, what I experienced in my life. And I'm like, times when I was trying to do it on my own and, and things, I just would go through life and just go through and achieve goals and do things. And I'm like, something's missing. Like, what is missing? Like, why am I right. feeling this way? Why am I depressed? Exactly. Why am I this? Why am I that? And then I thought it was maybe, I want love. I want marriage. I want this. I want that. I want God, sex, and love. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> I want God, right. I want, you know, you know, I want all these things, right? <laughs> You know, like, that's where it came from. Me being like, these are the things that I, I wanted so bad or whatever. And mm. then, and I'm seeking the Lord, like, well, why don't I have it yet? I'm ready to get married now. And, you know, all different things. <laughs> and then I'm, I'm reading and listening to the Bible and things, and they, um, listening to sermons and stuff like that, and reading the Bible and seeing that, yeah, you're not really ready for all the things you want. And here's why, because you're not including me in every aspect of your life. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, I guess that makes sense, you know. <laughs> and um, But I just feel like, again, the more I, I started to, I guess, focus on the Lord and focus on like, okay, well, Lord, what is it that you want? Because I thought I knew and all this type of stuff. So what is it that you want me to do? Now I'm on this path sitting here talking to you today. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And right. it's just, it's just one of those things where again, you know, if you had to ask me all those years ago when I was really struggling, like yelling up at God and struggling and stuff and like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> what do you want me to do? <laughs> and all of that, then, um, you know, I, I have no clue where I would be. I, I really don't. But um, I know I'm I'm grateful for, you know, my journey and things of that nature. Um, and it sounds like you, you know, have a journey of your own. I know you're saying later in life and things. Um, so I am curious to know um, if we go back to what I was going to ask you earlier, like, what would you say? Uh, do, you, do you know or, or have a specific reason, for example, where like, Christianity didn't resonate with you? Or, um, well, probably because I was gay. So, you know, I, uh, back when I was, I mean, I'm 65, so I'm talking about way back, right? So, mm -hmm. when I was young and started getting, like, I was a trumpet player, I was a classical trumpet player, was my very first career. Mm -hmm. And so, I played a lot of church services. And so, I heard mm -hmm. a lot of sermons and mm -hmm. I heard a lot of, you know, scripture being quoted. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, there was a, there was a very distinct, you know, very different from today. In some places, I think there are still some places in the country where uh, they would say, well, that's an absolute sin, you know, and all this. And when I would talk to my older sister about it, she would say, well, the Bible teaches us against the sin of homosexuality, which is different from actual homosexuality. And I never did quite get that. <laughs> I still probably don't. Mm. But I, 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 what I did was just have grace, you know, for her or with her to say, well, if you still love me for me being just who I am, then that's good enough for me. I don't need to know like what the words say or how it parses down because somebody, there's a lot of somebody's out in the world that are still maybe saying, well, you know, you're, you're sinning against God. And my whole thing was, well, if God made me, then why would there be anything mm. wrong with me? So, um, mm. so that's probably where most of it came from, but I also, I was a little feminist back then. I mean, I kind of still am, but not the way, feminism goes these days but um mm. but at the time i remember thinking well why would i be so suppressed just for being a girl like i felt like i could be mm. just as good as a boy in a lot of things and i remember mm. i sent off this is crazy i was 16 years old i sent off for information on how to become a fighter jet pilot with the military because i wanted to fly a jet mm. it never occurred to me i'd have to actually shoot people or be in a military machine where violence might it never was so silly i didn't think mm. i just mm. wanted the thrill of flying a fast jet right but when mm. the information came back you had to be a boy and you had to have perfect eyesight and i was wearing glasses mm. since i was in fourth grade and so mm. there was two different reasons why i couldn't do it but that kind of thing that you know girls can't do what boys can do really stuck in my craw and it seemed to be pretty prevalent in the christian church so mm. but like i said i didn't I did. I wasn't coming to it with an open mind. You know, I was just a kid. I was. Just, I was needy. I was asking. I was like beseeching. You know, mm -hmm. what? What do you? What do you got for me? You know, how? How can I feel better with you? And I didn't mm -hmm. get the answer. You can feel better with us. You know, I. I got mm -hmm. what felt like rejection and and um, mm -hmm. condemnation. So it just mm -hmm. wasn't a match for me. And mm -hmm. um, but 
but the parts of it that are a match are a match. So I feel like everybody's got, you know, if you took a hundred Christians and put them in the same room and then ask them all the same question about something in the Bible or their belief about their faith or whatever, you'd probably get close to a hundred different answers. And mm. so I just really feel like as we are all seeking and asking and, and deciding how much we can receive, you know, and getting ready to receive the it, the the answer can come from just about anywhere it can come, my my uh, other brother uh, yeah, I wouldn't call I don't think he would call himself a born again christian the way my other two siblings would but he yeah. absolutely they go to church on a pretty regular basis and he kind of he he had been arrested for armed robbery and he was serving a, a sentence of of weekends only in the local jail he was really 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 lucky and uh, my dad like second mortgaged his house to get a good lawyer and all this stuff. And so they managed, we managed as a family and he managed to save him. He went from doing drugs from the time he was 12 and this whole legal thing to a really, really fine upstanding uh, member of the community, a, you know, a wife and three kids and, and a house. And, and he just really pulled it all around. And a lot of that was because he met an older man. He was he was 20 or 21, I guess, at this point when he was serving the sentence, there was an older man that was serving the same kind of sentence. He would, they were both there on weekends in this little local jail just outside of DC. And mm -hmm. the man was a Christian and he kind of took him under his wing and started teaching him. And just that little bit, it was only about, I'm going to say about 12 months of weekends. So, you know, it wasn't years and years and years, but it was enough to turn him around and mm -hmm. um, save him. He, he was saved by that. So I just really think you never know where it's going to come from. You just never know. You never know what it's going to look like. You don't know what color it's going to be. You don't know how what age it's going to be. You're not, not going to know the exact words. But when you feel it, you feel it. And it catches you wherever you can, wherever you are. And, and, then, and then from there, we can take more control and decide for ourselves. And that pesky free will again that you were talking about earlier. <laughs> we can decide what to do with it. But mm -hmm. the message can come, you know, in mir I mean, the miracles happen every day. The message can come from anywhere. I mean, that that is true. That is true. I um, honestly, as you well, again, thank you for the vulnerability of sharing, you know, details about your life. <laughs> um, you know, I think, again, um, we I've addressed the LGBT issue um, on, here on GSL because obviously it's a part of the sex conversation. Sure. Um, but then we have it necessarily as well. Um, not to have like a full, like, convert, you know what I mean, like episode or something um, centered around it just yet. Um, but I have shared my own testimony and things of that nature, so people should know at least, I mean, um, you know, my journey and whatnot. And that includes, again, being introduced at a younger age to, you know, sexual things by the babysitter that happens to be female. So obviously, I'm going to grow up with thoughts and ideas. And sure, I tried trying to do stuff out of college, you know, I wrote all about it, get my book cultivation period to sing Christmas journey. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> um and stuff. And so I believe that a lot of the GSL stuff stemmed from being introduced, right? Um and wanting what you want and, and things of that nature. Um so I get it. I mean even as a married woman, I, yes I'm married to a man and I have a son and it's an amazing, beautiful thing. Um but there's still struggles and whatnot. And I believe even just this weekend, this past weekend, um God reminded me of just how important what Christ did is because at the end of the day, none of us are it can ever reach that level of perfection. I know we try to, we think that, oh, if I could just do it myself, you know, X, Y, and Z, or I can, or I don't need Jesus, or whatever we think. But then I was reminded again, because I, you know, I felt short. I was kind of, um, to be long story short, and I guess I'm not go too deep into it unless the world wants me to. Uh, <laughs> I feel like I, I was tempted, and I felt like I kind of fell short in regards to like how I should respond as a wife, right? As a mother as a believer you know all those things and so and i was kind of struggling with that and i'm like well lord you know you know i'm I, well, i'm learning to shift some things on how i do things um to hopefully help me for future temptations because it's always going to be there um but in that moment what i felt like i was showing me was that this is why i had to do it this is why i had to go to the cross this is why i had to sacrifice myself for you and everyone is because nobody is capable because anytime we think that oh you know um I have no sin whatever then that is your sin <laughs> that's it because you say you have none um 
at least according to the Bible. I'm just talking about Bible right now. Sure. Um, and so um, I guess with that being said, again, um, everybody, especially believers, um, I can't look down, for example, on you or anybody else for whatever we go through. Like you said about your brother going to jail with the, you know, stealing and, the, you know, all those different things are in the Bible, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> things we yep. shouldn't do. And we all do things. I shouldn't probably do the things I do, you know, and stuff like that as well, you know? Um, so because of that, I feel like that should be the thing that, that makes this, make us understand that this is an even playing ground. We all sin and falling short. So I can't look down on you. You can't look down on me. And, and that's why we need Jesus. Like, I don't understand like why we have to we as believers yes so this is for the christian community or whatever but also for anybody like why do we want to think that we're better than or look down on someone else um and i know the bible addresses this because it talks about taking out the the what is it um the moat versus the planking your own eye you know all that and stuff yeah. and so it's all addressed in there but for some reason we still just live like that and do that and so you know, for any, yeah, I don't know what all you've experienced. And I'm I'm glad to hear that your family, you know, at least show consistent love and things of that nature. Because I know some people have don't have that testimony and in, in that favor, I guess. <laughs> um, so I'm glad to hear that. But I, it sounds like when it came to maybe church or whatever the case may be, there might have been um some things or some you know people that did not make you feel welcome, loved, or show you the fruits of the spirit as they should and stuff like that. Just for believers, like, hey, man, this is, I feel like, another example for us to step up and understand that, hey, man, you falling short. We all falling short. That's why Christ did what he did. Stop treating people some way, man. At the end of the day, this is your brother, your sister. Help build this person up versus, like, tearing people down. I mean, you know, not just, I'm not going to change. I can't change what the Bible say, you know, but I can, but I can still love you regardless of, you know, what we choose to do. And because that's what Christ does. So, right. I don't know. <laughs> well, and, and the people that don't feel connected, they don't feel connected to themselves or connected to God, however you want to say it. Those mm. are the ones that are acting out in this way. And and if you mm. if you think of it as fear, like like it really helps for me to understand. Okay, here is you know like if you saw a wild animal, you know, and they were trapped and they were lashing out, you know, like with their claws and their teeth, mm. you wouldn't say mm. what a horrible animal. You'd say they're afraid. And it would soften your your reaction to them or your decisions about how to interact with them, right? Mm. And uh, I mean, you might still run, you know, I mean, depending on what's going on. But if your job to to fix the animal, for example, if they got a broken leg, let's say, and they're really, you know, biting and clawing and stuff, you mm. would not be like, oh, this is a horrible animal. I'm really mad at him. You would say, oh, you know, you're you're afraid, you know calm down, sweetie. It's going to be okay. I'm not going to hurt you. You'd change your, your physiology. You'd change your tone of voice. You'd be in your heart for that animal, mm -hmm. right? And so mm -hmm. I see it kind of the same way. Anytime there's a human acting out in a way that is antisocial or violent or angry or sad or whatever it is, they're basically mm -hmm. out of faith. They're not in connection mm -hmm. with their faith. They're not in connection with God and with who, you know, the love that, that, that we truly are. And so mm -hmm. if you look at them as just afraid, then you know you know i can soften my my heart to them and and mm -hmm. try to be there for them in a way that maybe nobody's ever been there for them before or mm -hmm. you know to to find help them find resources or or whatever it is you know yeah. so yeah. so to me that's all it is it's just you're either in love or or faith or you're in fear or lack of faith mm. and i like that it's really sim that makes it really simple for me cuz i don't I'm not very good at remembering, you know, 20 different rules or 16 different ways to make sure you do things right and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, to, to me, it's just really simple, like love or fear. So a lot of people think the opposite of love is hate, but it's not. It's mm -hmm. fear. It's lack of faith. Mm -hmm. And love is faith. And that's what God is. It's just pure love and pure faith. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, all the stories about Jesus and everything, it's all about faith. And how to release fear and come back to God. Every Come back to God, come back to God, come back to God. And I really think that's the majority of what the Bible is trying to teach us. I know it, you know, some people will read the Bible and say, well, there's a bunch of rules in here. We better follow them. But I don't see it that way. I see it as like just guidance on how to not be afraid. Man, that honestly, I love that analogy. Like that's really good because 
I mean, and I think this is what the Bible talks about, about us renewing our mind. Like we think one way about people, right? Or we think one way about, you know, let's just say, yeah, people are in each other. We're like, you know, um, but if we start to look at each other through God's eyes, then again, you you will have that grace and mercy for people. You know what I'm saying? Because again, Absolutely. You know, I say this all the time, man, but here it is again. All right. Sorry, GSL people. <laughs> but I mean, I feel like when it's us, it's yes, please. Grace and mercy. I need the grace and mercy. Yes. Thank you so much for the grace and mercy. God, give me grace and mercy. People give me grace and mercy. Thank you. Thank you. But then now when it's time for you to give the grace and mercy to your sister, your brother, whoever, then it's like, oh, no, justice. Justice. <laughs> no grace and mercy for you, you know what I mean? And it's like, how? You know, um, and it's so what see the Lord keep doing this to me, but here it is again. So another recent thing that happened, I want to say maybe like a few weeks ago, um, we were teaching the kids. Um, I think I told you, I can't remember, but I think I, I did tell you I'm, I'm the elementary coordinator at the church, and so yeah, the, yeah, I yeah. did tell you earlier. Yeah. So um, so we we're talking to the kids about um the the parable about the uh the, the rich ruler that was like trying to collect his money one of the servants couldn't pay and like it was really bad owed a whole bunch of money he was gonna have to him his family you know the wife short everybody was gonna have to get sold because he didn't have the money or whatever the case may be and he asked for grace and mercy grace and mercy grace and mercy right and then <laughs> the king was like you know what i'm gonna give you grace and mercy don't even worry about it. Your debt's clear. X, Y, and Z. And then that same person goes to the next person, like somebody that's on the same level as him. All right. And and pretty much, and don't owe as much as he owed at all. Like owed like, I guess you would say pennies compared to what he owed, right? And, and the Bible tells us he choked the man out, puts the man in jail, and all this different type of stuff. And then of course, you know, people would not say snitch, but yeah, I mean, look, I'm paraphrasing for him. Praise and everything, but y'all go read this for yourself. But it pretty much talks about how he pretty much put that person in jail and did all the no, there was no grace and mercy that he extended after he had just received like so much, you know what I mean? And it's just right. like, but we do that, why do we do that? You know, like we forget though. I just think that's I think that's the thing we forget that uh, we're not perfect, and and you know, and that we why can't we give what we're given? You know, you give, get. But some people aren't giving it too, so it's it's a whole thing. It's like a like they say vicious cycle, I guess. So. Well, maybe anyway. it's kind of like like a container that's not quite full yet. Like you've gotten some, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But you're not full yet. We can only mm -hmm. give from our abundance, right? So if I'm not full mm -hmm. yet, and then I and then I and then I feel like I've been forsaken or or I just forget, you know. So I'm mm -hmm. I'm walking around half full. So I've gotten yeah. some, but not enough for me to actually share it with somebody else. So to me, my main like obligation, I get a responsibility, if you want to put it that way, is to get yeah. myself so full of love, so overflowing with love and grace that Ooh. then I have some to share with others. And again, it kind of comes back to that whole, if somebody's afraid, if somebody's acting out, then there's nothing not if, if I don't have the tools with me, there's nothing I can do to help them. If I have the mm -hmm. tool, if you want to think of love as a tool, then I have something to give. Now, whether they mm -hmm. accept it or can, can even understand it or not, that's that's beyond me, right? But mm -hmm. all I can do is be the love to, to share the love that I have received because I mm -hmm. allowed so much to come in that I just got to full and overflowing. And wow. so then I have so much to share. That but, that's so good, sis. Like you really said that that right there. <laughs> she just dropped a whole bunch of gems, and I hope people just go ahead and catch it and pick them up because <laughs> that is so good. That's so true too, though. Yeah, you can't pour from an empty glass, and I, that helps me. Thank you. That helps me understand that in a whole other way to be like, yeah, you can't give what you can't, you know, that you don't have. And, yeah, and, and that so helps you, you give yourself get. grace. You mm, give yourself you know. grace. Yes, that too. We gotta get. We gotta learn to do that too. Yeah. So you receive mm. grace, then you mm. and you gotta learn how to do that. A lot of us, you mm. know, we don't know how to do that unless yeah. we unless somebody teaches us. How do we know how to do that, right? So then yeah. we really yeah. learn to receive grace. Okay, great. Now grace is coming in. Okay, now I gotta learn how to get full up with grace. And we don't mm -hmm. know how to do that, right? We don't know mm -hmm. that's a thing. But then we get full mm -hmm. up. Now we got to learn how to share it with others. Well, we don't know how to do that. Nobody told us how to do that. They told mm -hmm. us a bunch of rules we're supposed to follow, but that's not the same as giving grace. So now you got to mm -hmm. learn that part. Then you got to learn how to deal with 
how others respond to it. Because as soon as you give something, you typically you want an outcome, right? You, I want you to feel better. I'm going to give you this grace mm -hmm. and your responsibility is to feel better. Oh, mm -hmm. you don't feel better? Well, dog, uh, Okay, <laughs> like what do I do now? Like you said, we can't take that responsibility. That's what I'm. I've been learning that recently as well. Where I'm like, I can't take on again, like how you receive. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. or, and stuff like that. I can only do it right, give, pour, and then how you take it and receive, and what you do with it is, right. is on that person. I can't. But sometimes I've been. I think I've been struggling with like taking it on too, and be like, but I just want you to do so bad, just to understand and da 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 and just try. No grace, but but it's like no, nah, I can't I can't do that part though. I gotta stop doing it. You know, right. I gotta let people live their life, make their choice, and Absolutely. things of that nature. Um, we we call that in, we call that okay. entanglement. So you have love for mm. somebody, but then you can have an entanglement about mm. about how they receive it or whether they reciprocate or or whatever. You know, so. Yeah. So when you separate those two things out, like here's the love that feels really good. Here's the entanglement that does mm. not feel good. That does not feel good. And as you learn to separate that and then release the part that doesn't feel good, then what's left is pure love. Feels fantastic. Mm. And so it's it's a matter, you know, it's like yearning, you know, like it is probably the simplest example of attachment. I really, really, really want this thing, you know, but as long as I really, really want it, I can't have it. Because mm. I'm not being it. I'm not matching it. I'm not actually allowing it into my life, whatever that thing mm. is or person or event or thought or whatever it is. Mm. The, the yearning, if you can let go of that yearning, because yearning is really kind of like a focus on the lack of the thing. I want this mm. thing, but I don't have it. I want this thing, but I don't have it. I want mm -hmm. this thing, but I don't have it. So let that part go. And then I just want this thing. Mm. Beautiful. Beautiful. Do, and you know what? And well, <laughs> here it goes again. But the, the last guest I, I spoke with, um, we were kind of talking about that in a way. And um, what I think both she and I was were saying is that about like, um, I believe that God wants us to understand that like that that's where He comes in. Like we should. I know this is gonna be hard and tough. Like because again, we want to do what we want to do, and we like what we like, or whatever it is, right? And we're like, oh, well, I got my own ideas about what my life should look like, right? And um, but when he has this ultimate plan of what your life should look like, and I think that's where it again comes in, it's like getting into alignment with him and his word, his plan, whatever. Um, and then I guess understanding that he is enough at the end of the day. Like I don't think we we really believe that. You know what I'm saying? But and I, I'm I'm probably struggling to believe that too because I'm like, I, well, I think it's this, that, and the other. I think it's all you know. Again, the love, the marriage, the sex, da, 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 it's everything. I want everything. It's you know. And then I was like, well, because Lord, you can't give me that part, you know. <laughs> and we try to find yeah. our reason. But um, but yeah, I think it's there's something to again if if we I think we can have the pure love right when like you just said about the entanglements and whatnot like. If we let those again thoughts of all the things that we want to have or think that we're supposed to have, and then and then really do connect to the source or pure love, then then we'll see that we have all we need. I mean, at least I feel like that's what the Bible is telling us to do. Um, but we struggle, man. We we out here trying to figure it out. And I get, you know, I get yeah. that. I did want to say something about what the the reference you were making to rules and whatnot, because I feel like. Now, this is what I think about the rules in the Bible. I believe that they're there more so for like, like warnings and protection more so than anything. Mm, absolutely. You know what I'm like, I think yeah. like, because when you look at it, I know they're going to bring up like, oh, well, what about all the laws and the old, you know, I mean, there's so many laws. Like, but I'm like, <laughs> I mean, well, I think it's wisdom, right? To, you know, now some things might be confusing. Like, well, why couldn't they wear the da da Why couldn't they, you know, eat the da da da? You know, because there were certain, but then one, we have to understand the context. We have to understand certain people. We have to understand, like, they were separate. You know, there was a lot of things going on with that particular group of people. But I think overall, the, the rules and the laws and things of that nature or the commandments or whatever, I believe that were there for more so our protection and for our, like, prevention of, um, you know the different issues that we we face in life i mean we we take them and be like it's a burden to to do those things um but then when christ comes he just says well the main thing is love god and love others absolutely like, and if you do that then then you you're pretty much doing all the laws anyway you know because exactly. Kind of, exactly you know i was breaking i was breaking that down in my mind like some years ago that like you know 
because again, if I loved my brother, I wouldn't steal. Like if I loved my sister, I wouldn't be covenant after her household. You know what I mean? If I love, you know, if I love, then the rest of the things would be under all of that. But yeah. we struggle with the love. <laughs> We, struggle we can love. absolutely, and you know, to me, it's all about feeling. So mm. if you're, if I mean, and this is one of the things that I that I help my clients with. It. If you're thinking a lot about it, if you're trying to figure it out, then you're not going with the the flow that has already been established. Now, whether you say that's God's will or your own will, that might be like a good conversation to have at some point. If it feels really good, it feels right, and it takes you in a loving path, and it takes you towards what you're what you came here like kind of meant to do then and if you feel it and you can follow it because you feel it then you will be like you were just saying all of those things that the rules say you should be you will be kind you'll be generous you'll be present in your life you'll be a good mother father daughter sister whatever you are and mm. and you'll you'll be like a beacon of light to the others around you when they say oh well, I want to be more like that. I want it. She seems happy or he seems really, you know, successful or whatever the end outcome is or whatever, you know, we're, we're, we're demonstrating to the world and people say, well, I want more of that. I want to know how she does that. Or I want to know how he, what he thinks about this, or, you know, you can, in other words, people will come to you and ask if it, for help and for support and for grace, if you've already got grace and it's being very easily demonstrated. But if I'm up in my head, I can't feel the grace. And I start making decisions that aren't as good for me or for anybody else. So, mm -hmm. so to me, one of the things is getting into your heart and actually getting into your body, like in, in your focus and in your like actual sensations of, of feeling, you know, like if I have a, a, an emotion, I feel it in my body, then I know I'm, I'm really present to that emotion. If I'm having the emotion and I'm acting out, and I'm not really aware of, of the feeling in my body, then I'm kind of out of touch with God. You know, it's like, it's mm. like, like the body is like the, the way of making sure that you're in touch with God, because mm. that's where our guidance is, you know, our intuition, our grace, our love, everything that we want is actually coming to us almost like a portal through our body. And so, and I don't mean like, you know, like some people think, well, okay, if I'm in my body and I do whatever I feel like from my body, then I'm going to go eat a bunch of donuts or I'm going to, you know, do a bunch of stuff that, that usually would not be very good for us or not very good mm -hmm. for the society. And so, so that's part of the thing is to discern what actually feels good. Uh, mm -hmm. Not what the commercials say will make us feel good. Right. So we get a mm -hmm. lot of, of external messaging that says that this will make you feel good, you know, drinking beer or, you know, having sex or whatever it is will make you feel good. But what really feels good is love in our hearts. And it's mm. a definite feeling. It's a sensation. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's an experience. And once mm. we're really tuned in and tapped in with that, then we can, we can just kind of be ourselves and trust that everything's going to kind of work out. Like we're going to, we're going to be giving grace, you know, we're going to be receiving grace. We're going to be kind. We're going to be generous. And like you said, you know, like just following all the rules, but without like checking off the rules, like walk, walking around mm -hmm. with a checklist and saying, well, you didn't do this and you didn't do that, you know, like that kind of rule taking, but mm -hmm. the rules just kind of take care of themselves when you're really connected to God, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And for me, mm -hmm. that means going through my body, actually feeling the emotion and the sensations in my body. Hmm. Well, I mean, I, I think there's definitely more to explore with that. I mean, because um, I mean, I know I think believers or, you know, people that study or whatever um, the Bible, they probably be like, well, technically, you know, I guess we're not supposed to because feelings change and, you know, and all of that type of stuff. So. That again, and probably a whole nother conversation. Sure. <laughs> You're about to come on back, you know. We talk okay. about. I, I'll be here. Know. I'll be here. You just uh, say the word. I'll be here. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I do want to give you the opportunity to, you know, um, you know, share whatever final thoughts you would like to share in regards to, um, you know, the three signs of of getting into alignment that you have for us today, and then also, you know, feel free to share your social media or whatever else you would like. Um, you. Yeah, open open floor. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. So what, one of the, the basic things that I teach 
is that there is only three things that you really have to focus on. And one is to do whatever it takes to feel good. So that's like the one rule, do whatever it takes to feel good. And then of course that comes up, you know, like, oh, but what do you mean? Do you mean gambling? Do you need pornography? Like, you know, like, what does that mean? So the mm -hmm. second, and it's a, and it's a, it's a habit. And that is to learn to discern what feels good, what actually feels good. Like good in the eyes of God, or good in the in the feeling of our of our body's guidance, our intuition, not in the superficial flesh. Uh, good, like there's like there's different ways of feeling good, and so you mm -hmm. as you learn to discern that, it gets clearer and clearer, so that you can actually be presented with something, and just by the reaction in your body, say. No, that's not for me, but thank you so much anyway. In other words, I'm not going to sit in judgment over it, but it's also not for me because it doesn't feel good in this kind of discernment way. And mm. then allow things to unfold naturally is the third part. And that's a practice that you can practice from anywhere from I want a glass of water to where am I going to move next to which job should I take? Allow things to unfold naturally. So that's the three step. Do whatever it takes to feel good. Learn to discern what actually feels good and then let everything unfold naturally. In other words, stop mm. pushing, stop forcing, stop having smart goals and trying to force, you know, yourself on the world or force someone else to do something or force the timing of something or force yourself to mm. do something even though you really, really don't want to. Like stop forcing and just allow it to all unfold naturally. That takes faith. That mm. takes faith to allow things to unfold naturally. But if you've got that faith, your faith in yourself, faith, faith in God, faith in other people, you know, and for me, it's all of that. But um, yeah, those are the three steps. Do whatever it takes to feel good. Learn to discern what actually feels good and allow it all to unfold naturally. You start doing those three things, you're going to notice your life getting a lot better. It doesn't matter what else you're focusing on, but those three things will really help. Well, there you go, people. I mean, I hope that you guys, you know, encouraged and inspired by this conversation. I really truly appreciate you visiting us, Miss Verona, and you're welcome back Thank anytime. You. Thank you so much. Absolutely. I'd be glad to come back anytime. Thank you, Miracle. You're beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching the GSL Talk Show, and thank you to Miss Ramona for joining us tonight. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and check out our gifts from her and Good night.